One way to classify the calcium aluminum rich inclusions, the CAIs, is by looking at their rare earth element patterns as is shown here. So this is a category plot. On the x-axis are the rare earth elements and on the y-axis is the abundance of the rare earth elements in the CAIs. Now this is a normalized abundance, which means the concentrations of the rare earth elements in the CIs divided by the concentrations of the rare earth elements in CI chondroids. Further, the y-axis is divided in an upper and lower part, and in the lower part, the y-axis has a log scaling, and in the upper part, it is a linear scale. So just as a refresher, CIs are a minor component in most chondrites. In ordinary chondrites, they are rare, maybe almost down to zero volume percent, in carbonaceous chondrites, they are more abundant, with the highest abundance in CV chondrites, maybe 3 to 4 volume percent. It's a very important group because these are the oldest objects, or among the oldest objects that we have in the solar system, so they define basically um, T0, so time zero. Now, there are six different groups here, and part of these groups are called simply group 1 to group 6, although group 4 does not exist here because it refers to some ferromagnesian objects, which means then we need another group, a sixth group, and this is the ultra-refractory group here. Let's start with the upper part. There are four patterns. And first of all, all the patterns are enriched, including these from the lower part here, all the patterns are always enriched by about a factor of at least 20 times CI chondrites. So rare earth elements in CIs are always quite um, abundant which, which makes sense because they are refractory as are calcium and aluminum. So there are four different patterns. Now group 5 is the one pattern that has that is completely and entirely flat. And then there are three patterns left. And then there is one pattern that has positive anomalies in europium and ytterbium. And one pattern that has only a positive europium anomaly. And one pattern that has a negative europium and a negative um, terbium anomalies. So this is the group three, and the group three is basically complementary to the. So this is basically complementary to the group four. Now europium and terbium are the most volatile rare earth element patterns, and this is how these patterns are explained here. Because of the volatility, they did not condense together with the other rare earth elements, and therefore some gained uh, some more of the volatiles, whereas the others lost some of the volatiles. This is how the complementary patterns then were produced. And the lower part with the log scaling, we can um, discriminate two patterns here. And the first thing we see is that here we have the, um, the heavy rare earth elements and the light rare earth elements. And there's a fractionation between the heavy and light rare earth elements. So heavy rare earth elements are also a little more refractory. And then they can have an ultra refractory pattern here with very high enrichment in the um, high heavy rare earth elements, except for ytterbium, which is quite volatile. And um, so there are enrichments about up to three orders of magnitude higher than the other rare earth elements, and about maybe two orders of magnitude enrichment or fractionation from the light rare earth elements. So this might be, again, due to volatility, but it could also be due to partitioning of the rare earth elements, maybe in different minerals. And then these are um, included to different extents into the variable, CA, the various CAIs. Now the group 2 pattern, again, there's a um, fractionation between the light and rare earth elements, but it's a little bit complementary to the ultra refractories, because in this case, I'll take maybe a different color here, so the light rare earth elements are slightly enriched relative to the heavy rare earth elements here in the group 2. So there's a certain complementarity maybe in group 2 and ultra refractories where the ultra object or when the ultra refractory components form and then these are removed, the, the ultra refractories, the high rare earth elements are removed from a gas. It is depleted in the heavy rare earth elements and these are then incorporated in some other objects forming the group 2 pattern. This is some way to explain this. So this is one way of classifying the or discriminating among the various CAIs, although this kind of classification here is not correlated to, for example, the petrographic um, appearance and classification of the CAI. So this is something 
something independent from this. And this is rare earth element patterns in calcium aluminum rich inclusions.